Welcome to Deerfield United Methodist Church for a time of worship and the word. My name is Joanna Besky. I am the pastor here. This morning, our call to worship comes from Isaiah chapter 12. Give thanks to the Lord. Praise his name. Tell the whole, the whole world what he has done, his mighty acts on our behalf. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things for us. Raise your hearts and voices. Shout and sing your praise, for great is the Holy One who lives among us. Let us continue to worship him in song as we sing, Give Thanks. Testament reading is from Proverbs 23, verses 4 through 5. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Our New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians 8, verses 1 through 7. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, See that you also excel in this grace of giving. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This message is being recorded uh, mid-November, and so in a few days we will be celebrating Thanksgiving, a holiday acknowledged one day a year, yet it, it represents a way of living to which God has called us. We are to give thanks to the Lord. We are to give thanks in everything. We are to offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. We are to glorify God in our thanksgiving, and we are told that thankfulness flows from the heart. Just to name a few of the things that scripture says about giving thanks. 
One way that we give thanks to God and maintain a heart of generosity is through our giving. Now, before you tune out thinking, oh boy, here it finally came. I knew one of these was going to be a, th a stewardship sermon. Let me just put your minds to rest. Yes, this is the stewardship sermon. <laughs> However, I want to give thanks and celebrate how God has blessed our giving this past year and dream a little bit about next year. A few years back, there was a book that came out by the title, Eat This, Not That. It showed you how to replace eating foods that were unhealthy for you with similar items that were much more healthy. Now, if I were to write a book based on our sermon today, I title it, Give Like This, Not Like That. The Proverbs passage gives us three guidelines on what not to do with our money. We are not to spend all of our time and energy chasing after money and wealth. We are not to trust our own desires and plans regarding money. Finally, we are not to hold our money tightly because before we know it, it'll grow wings and fly away. Anyone who has started Christmas shopping can attest to the last one. I literally saw, thought I saw my money grow wings and fly away as I was at the checkout counter at Walmart. In contrast, Paul in our New Testament lesson from the book of 2 Corinthians gives us a beautiful example of a people who gave God, gave to God honoring him and in inspired ways. Let me set the scene by telling you a story and then giving three guidelines on what to do. So let's uh, take a look. I, I ask you to put on your imaginative lenses, a new set of glasses as we go on this journey. Now just imagine that we are sitting in a large room in a Roman style villa. It's a hot day outside, but the stone walls are keeping us cool. We are in the Greek city of Corinth, a city renowned for its wealth, success, and achievement. Statues and fine buildings are all around. In the room with us are people we know, young and old, rich and poor. They are our fellow Christians. We make up the church in that city, a church that was founded by the Apostle Paul and now overseen by him from afar as he continues to spread the gospel. It's been barely 20 years since Jesus rose from the dead. We have visitors who saw him when he was alive. In fact, we, the Corinth Church, are quite at the center of things. There is so much exciting going on. Wonderful speakers coming in to visit, great spiritual experiences, evidence of great faith. Corinth is a church to be proud of. We have links with other churches throughout the Mediterranean. In fact, we make good use of the roads to keep us in close touch with one another. We know that the Jerusalem church is in considerable financial difficulty, the results of rapid growth and especially the care of those in physical need, for example, widows and orphans. In addition, there is a great famine going on there. Now, Paul has asked us before to make a collection for the Jerusalem church, but with everything going on in, the, in Corinth, we are aware that we just haven't gotten around to it. And then Paul's latest letter was, written, was read to us, and we hear how the churches in the region of Macedonia, churches we know in towns like Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea, have responded to Paul's invitation. We know that there is little affluence in those rather remote outposts. In fact, they've been having a really hard time. But there is something different about the Christians up there. Apparently, they've been falling over themselves to give to the collection. They begged Paul to be involved. It makes us think about what our response is going to be as individuals and as a church in Corinth. So this is a letter that Paul wrote. 
And I want to point out three lessons that we can learn from these first seven verses of 2 Corinthians 8. First is that giving is about overflowing joy, not overflowing wealth. The Macedonian churches were not wealthy by any means. They were having a hard time financially, and Paul acknowledges it. But their given was not driven by their wealth. It was driven by their joy. They were full of praise for all that they had in Christ. And this praise overflowed in giving. It's as if they couldn't help themselves because they were brim full. They were full to the brim with the grace of God. There is a vital truth to hold on to here. Giving is not rooted in overwhelming wealth. Money to throw around because we don't know what to do with it. Giving comes from having overflowing joy, a deep sense of everything that God has given us, the grace that he has poured out upon us and into our lives that Jesus fills us continually up to the top with love, forgiveness, and purpose. It's being full of joy for the kindness of God, the deeds for which he is to be praised according to all that the Lord has done for us. And it is that joy that should motivate our giving. Giving does not start from bulging wallets, but full hearts. The key question we have to ask ourselves, therefore, is not how overflowing we are in terms of wealth, but how overflowing we are in terms of joy. In this post-pandemic climate, it's unlikely that many of us are overflowing with wealth, with the increased costs of everything and the decreasing in resources. However, I hope that every one of us is overflowing with joy, not because everything is perfect, but God has poured his grace into our lives. The starting point for our giving is not guilt or duty, but joy. Secondly, giving is about getting involved in what God is doing. We see this in verse 4 when we read that the Macedonian Christians urgently pleaded. They begged for the privilege of sharing in service to the saints. They wanted to be involved in what God was doing in their case, building up and supporting the Jerusalem church, which was the main church. They recognized that their gifts would be a part of making ministry happen. That is what the word translated service really means. And they would do anything to be involved in God's work, even if it meant going without themselves. That is a lesson that continues to be true today. Giving is about getting involved in what God is doing. It's not just about writing a check or emptying our wallets into a plate. It's about getting involved in the work that God is about. When we give to our local church, we are making ministry happen and we are being involved in God's work. We are getting our hands dirty in the work that God is about. Church, are you excited about what God is doing in your church, in our church? When we give, we are part of making Christ known in this community, this nation, and around the world. I find that exciting. We should find that exciting. Shortly at the end of this message, I'm going to share what that looked like for us as a church in 2022. Third, giving is about growing in faith. Paul told the Corinthians about the Macedonians' generosity because he wanted to spur them on to grow in faith themselves. You see, the Corinthian church was a really successful church. Paul says so in verse 7. However, Paul says there's one area they need to grow in. There's one area that their faith needs to expand in. And that's in giving. 
Paul clearly believes that there is a spiritual issue here, a matter of faith. And while the Corinthians can be excellent in that area as well, they need to grow in how to get there. I think as individuals, we are called to do the same. Our giving is not just a practical issue. It's a spiritual issue. It's an expression of our faith and our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not about quantity. It's about faithfulness. Remember the poor widow in the temple. Jesus and the disciples are watching everyone give. And then he says to his disciples, that woman, she gave the equivalent of, of, of a, a nickel, a dime, compared to the mass amounts that others were given. And yet he says, she gave the most. She gave all that she had out of joy. Her spiritual faith was large. Just as we are called to grow in our, our faith and our knowledge of God and, and our uh, trust in him, our understanding of his word and obedience, we're to grow in understanding and giving. It's a discipline that we need to stretch. And as we grow in giving, we grow in truth and love for our Lord Jesus Christ. This has certainly been the experience for our church here. The more we have given, the more faith has give, God has given us, and the more joy we have known. I've seen some of you here at Deerfield giddy about the opportunities that we have had to be present in our community. Opportunities like Upper Deerfield Day, where we were able to volunteer and give out grocery bags stamped with our church name and literature inside, or the Fall Fest, where we invited children to celebrate and play games. And, and these, these are just a couple of the things we have done and been in the community this year. These have required giving of our time, giving of our resources, giving of food, giving of T uh, tangible items, giving of the donations of so many of the businesses that are represented here in the church. We love giving as a sign of our love for Jesus Christ and as a light to that love to those who see. So we look and we see that giving is about overflowing joy, not about overflowing wealth. Giving is about getting involved in what God is doing, and giving is about growing in our faith. And so I want to look at what God has done. I want to give thanks in this Thanksgiving week for what God has done through the giving of this church and, and others in the community who have given to our church. It's meant that through your giving of gifts, tangible items, and finances, we were able to be radically generous in these ways. We have been able to keep all of our staff as well as giving raises. And you may think, you know, of course you're going to say that, Pastor. There's a lot of churches in this, in this time that where pastors have had to cut back their salaries had to cut back their hours or churches have closed. And so we are thankful and we praise God because of the giving this past year. Our staff has remained and we have gotten raises. We've been able to form a new worship team, bring back the choir, host outdoor events, host indoor events. We've been able to purchase an indoor-outdoor sound system. We have had an increased impact uh, presence on social media, including the recording of our services. We've been able to have your pastor become licensed. We've maintained, repaired, and improved our church properties. We've given more than $14,000 this year in missions. We've donated two truckloads of items to the Ranch Hope thrift shop. We've provided food. 
for mission teens on occasions. We've aided church members and community members who were in need. We have provided Easter meals for the Seabrook community. We provided clothing for Seabrook community. We hosted a vacation Bible school. We hosted special services throughout the year in addition to our Sunday services. We've kept the heat and the air conditioning running. We've celebrated our church community with a picnic. We've maintained our financial commitments to conference, which, uh, which then uh, supports other churches who are in need. And this is just a few of the things that our joyful giving has produced in 2022. Church, what are the dreams for 2023? What are the things that God has laid before us that require us to continue giving Perhaps some people aren't giving at all and, and God wants you to, to start giving, to start tithing, or, or to maybe just increase it a dollar this year. So I asked this, a number of people in the church, what are your dreams? If money wasn't an issue, what are some of your dreams for this next year? And uh, there was a lot of things that, that were repeats that uh, several people mentioned. One of them had to do with staffing that to bring on a pastor full-time. Along with that would be the full-time administrative assistant and perhaps someone uh, part-time or full-time that just did children's ministry and ministry to youth and youth groups, which means getting out there into the community and meeting the youth and drawing them in. Um, maybe a tech staff, someone who, who just does all of our tech needs. And then being able to purchase upgrade our tech, uh, our tech needs and um, products. Things like increased events, concerts, revivals, speakers. Increasing what we're giving to missions, maybe doubling, quadrupling it. Mass mailings that we would be sent out automatically to the community, letting uh, new people who've just moved in or, or people who've never heard about our church know more things about us. Uh, putting a lighted cross in the church, upgrading the, the, system, the lighting system in the parking lot, improving building safety, padded seats, finishing the basement so we have more places to meet, restructuring in the other buildings so that there's places for different classes, Sunday schools and Bible studies to meet, increasing the number of programs as the need requires, and perhaps even a church-led mission trip. These are just some of the dreams, and I'm sure you have some dreams. I'd love to hear about them. Things that this church can be involved in. For what? So we can say, hey, look at us. No, this is all about us being able to give glory to God, to make his name known, so that one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Church, let us be like the church in the Old Testament when they were building the temple. The people were instructed to give gold and silver and all sorts of resources to those who were building the temple. And the builders went to Solomon and said, tell the people to stop giving. We have too much. I don't think that'll be a problem. The more God gives financially, the more vision he gives. And you can never outgive God. Church, let us continue to be a people filled with joy, giving to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us online. We really would love to know who's out there and watching so we can encourage you and pray for you. So drop a line in the comments below where you're watching or go to the church uh, website, Deerfield UMC NJ fill out a contact form, a prayer request, um, or you can also give to the ministry there. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. May his joy overflow in your life so others may know him and give thanks.